just three minutes behind. <laughs> um, pushed it. That's good. That leads to me. <laughs> hello, hello. So sorry about that, y'all. I forgot to cross post earlier. So maybe now everybody will find us. I, unless something's going wonky, we're going to just get started. I don't know. It could just be a Facebook thing. But we are on the internet. And we are live. So, I'm going get, to just get started. If not, you'll get the uh, gist on the replay. But I'm Wendy. I'm the owner of Rosebrook Boutique, located near Meridian, Mississippi. And this is my series, Handmade at Heart, with Craft Around the Clock TV. And I was hoping Tracy would hop on and find us and get us shared out, but I don't see anything. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if we're really live. And I don't have another, I always forget to bring my iPad. Okay, I see one person. Hey, Karen, can you let us know where you're seeing us? Are we on Craft Around the Clock TV as well as my page? If you don't mind letting us know. But this is Tara Davis with Handcrafted... Leather. leather. <laughs> I don't know why I can't think about y'all. That's okay. You can just say Tara's leather work. <laughs> Tara's leather work. That's better. That's easier. And we were actually with her last Friday with episode four. This is episode five. I have taken my adventures on the road, y'all, for the last five weeks now. Every Friday at 10, I have um, been with a different special small business owner. <laughs> They're fabulous in their own way. They have their unique way of doing things. It's unique, one of a kind. And Tara does leather work and y'all, it's so pretty. And we started last week and we didn't finish. So I thought, well, let's do a part two. Hey, Tracy, there's Tracy. Hey, Tracy. We had issues this morning with uh, getting it cross stream, but hopefully y'all can see us and find us everywhere. Um, but we're just going to get started, y'all. We're here with y'all for the next 45 minutes, and we're a little, it's already five after, so we're going to get started, jump on in. But if y'all have questions, just give us, um, shout them out, and I'll be reading the screen. We're in Laurel, Mississippi today with Tara, and she's going to, we started, this is what we, it's, this is the final that you can, um, create and last week we she showed us how to do the little basket weave right, mm -hmm, right. The little basket weave detail and we got to the point where she was doing the stitching so that's where we're gonna pick up today okay so what I've got here is we started on this side last time and while uh, we had our break I went ahead and stitched all the way around it but I'm gonna show you how to finish that stitching off so it's basically the same exact thing as we did over on this side, but we're going to do it on this side. And then I'm going to show you how to cut your threads off. So, and if you missed last week's uh, episode, there is the replay. You can go back and watch it. But uh, basically she uses, I remember, what did you say about the needle? It's a special needle? No, it, they come in all, in all your kits, but it's just basically a, a leather sewing needle. It's got a larger eye and it's a pretty thick needle. There's lots of different kinds, thin ones, thick ones, but this one just has the big eye because I'm using the bigger thread. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go all the way through and make the loop on the outside, just like we did over here with this one. Pull it tight. We're gonna go through the other side. So you actually have two threaded needles. Yes. Okay. Yes, this is gonna be called the saddle stitch. And you can look that up um, if you missed it last week or wanna know exactly how to do it. Okay, so I've done that twice, same on both sides. And then we're gonna back stitch two holes so that it, it uh, has the stability and we don't have to tie a knot. Okay. So, it's kind of hard to go back through where you had already laced because that hole is now getting tighter with all the lacing. So we're going to go back through this way. Go into the second hole down. Come on. But last week she showed us how to uh, do our templates and cut the leather. We even stained some leather. So you can do some staining if you want to. I think we did a navy last week. We did, and we're gonna finish our navy today. Yay! Okay, so I've done that, and now we're just gonna pull both of those tight, okay? And then you're gonna take your scalpel, and this is how you're gonna cut your, your thread off. A lot of people will burn their thread, and that's, that's a fine option. 
but it's gonna hold just fine without having to burn it. So you're gonna hold your scalpel flat onto your lacing and you're gonna leave it flat and you're gonna pull your thread, not pull the scalpel. Gotcha. And then that makes it real flush and you have a nice finish. We're gonna turn it over, do the same thing on the back side. Super easy, okay? There's so the that, last stitch. So that part is done. There's your stitching, all nice. All right, the next thing we've gotta do, we've gotta finish these edges. You see how rough? that is okay well i uh went ahead and sanded this side okay you see how much smoother that is now i use a sanding wheel which is an electric sanding wheel because it gives me a, a lot a cleaner finish but that's not to say that you can't do it with sandpaper so basically you're just going to sand that edge really smooth so that you have a nice finish on this side as opposed uh -huh. to this side that's got like there's extra overhang where right. maybe you didn't cut your pattern exactly right and it didn't fit on there. Now, like I was talking about last week, when you have a kit, your kit is gonna almost match perfectly. But when you're cutting your own leather, sometimes you have a little a little um, place that may not be exactly the way you want it. So you're gonna sand that off. And I've done this one here. It's already stitched just like that one. And I've already sanded all the way around it. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to bevel the edges. So on this finished product, as you'll see how it has that, that light trim all the way around it, and it's nice and smooth. So that's basically what we're working on here. So we're gonna take this, this is a number two edge beveler, and you're gonna take it and you're just gonna push it at an angle, not super hard, and it's just gonna strip that off all the way. So there's your little piece. And Neat. There's your little line. Okay. Let me show them the tool. Okay. That's the beveler she was talking about. Angle bevel, beveler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Edge beveler. Edge beveler. Okay. So we're going to do that all the way around the whole thing. Hey, Beth. Hey, Maria. Hey, Sybil. How are y'all doing this morning? Happy Friday, everybody. Yeah. Woo -hoo, it's Friday. It's Friday. Okay, so we're gonna continue to do that. And we're gonna also do the top all the way around. Okay, so now it's all clean. Neat. It looks nice and finished. But we're gonna have to do the same thing on the back side. I don't know if you can see it, how fuzzy it is on the yeah. back side. So you wanna make that smooth. So we're Y'all make sure y'all send those roses. Get the word out that we're live and we're doing leather work with Tara. Nobody wants to miss this, y'all. I'm right. so excited. And uh, as soon as we get through with this, we're going to try to do some earrings at the end. So y'all stay tuned. Stay tuned. Hey, Beth. All right. Scott that off of there. And as I'm doing this, um... The next step we're going to be doing is we're going to be burnishing the edges and that's going to give it that final coat that makes it real clean, polished, and pretty. All right, so we're done with that. The next thing you're going to need is coconut oil and it is burnishing gum. Okay, and you can do this same thing by waiting. Did you say coconut oil? Tokeno. Token. 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 <laughs> so you can do the same thing um, with this with just dipping your finger in water and running it across there. But this is gonna give it that really smooth, pretty finish that you're right. gonna want with all of your end products. So you're just gonna dab this on there a little bit like that. Okay, and then you're gonna take your, um, gosh, I always forget the names of things. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> this, this little gadget, <laughs> all right. And you can also do this, there's an electric one. And I just happen to like using my elbow grease and really getting in there and pushing yeah, on me it. Too. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna rub pretty hard on there. I have an electric sander and I'd rather oh, just use, yes. I'd just rather use my little sanding pads because I don't, I feel like I got more control or something. All right. So hey Jennifer, gonna hey Paula. Push and push and push and lots of elbow grease makes it smoother the harder you push. And She's then, getting her arm workout, y'all. Yes, you are. Okay. <laughs> the next thing you're going to do, this is just a piece of, um, um, uh, I used a drop cloth. Canvas. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> then you're just going to rub that really hard with some canvas. 
All right, and now it's getting really smooth. I don't know if you can see that. You wanna feel that? Oh yeah, I can tell. It yeah, is it's very got a, smooth. It's got a shine on it. It's real smooth, pretty, shiny. So you're gonna just do this all the way around the edges of it. All right. And for those we'll that missed out on side. the first one, Tara's been doing this for about two years. Mm, about a year. About a year. A year and a so half. So she's a pro already, Oh, no. I'm definitely not <laughs> a pro. There, I'm sure there's people that are thinking, ooh, you might be doing that wrong. But <laughs> We all have our own way of doing things, y'all. Yes. And there's no right, really right or wrong right. way. As long um, as it's a good product in the end and it lasts. Okay. And then we're going to buff that one up. And she got all, her dad passed about two years ago. Almost two years. Okay, and she, uh, he, this is what he did, and he left all her tools and everything with her, and she learned some things from him and just picked it up, watching videos and things like that. Okay, so now we've got all that done, and you're going to want to go around and obviously do the top side too. But that's how you're going to burnish your edges and make them nice and pretty and smooth. And hey, then, Donna. Hey, Sonia. I'm gonna put this up and we are gonna move Smooth to edges, y'all. And now we're gonna move to this is the blue one that you oh, picked yeah. the blue on last week. That's what we started dying last uh -huh. week. Now, so remember, I remember together. She just did like one coat because it has to dry, and then you just keep adding coats until you get the color you want. All right. And what was the dye you used? Can't it remember now. Is... Like the just the name of the dye. You don't I can't remember what dye we used. Wait, wait. Go back to episode four. <laughs> And actually, I was going to say something a little bit about dyes. They do have dyes at your local hardware stores. Uh, okay. or hard, not hardware stores, craft stores. Like, I know Michael's carries it. I know Hobby Lobby carries it. And it's it. leather dye? Yeah, leather okay. dye. They have a whole little section on leather stuff. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we've got to attach our strap, our buckle, um, onto our strap. So, you want to make sure that when you're doing this, you want the blue side, where's the sample? The blue side to be on the outside. So, it's going to be opposite of what you're thinking because I've made one like this and went like this and went oh, no. wrong way. <laughs> so, you're going to put it this way and I have a rivet and I'm going to show you how to put a rivet in. So, you're going to take the, I don't know if you can see this. There's just a small rivet and a cap. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna poke, poke the rivet through on the back side. Hey, Darlia, hey, Nan is that Nanette? All right, and we're gonna put this strap on there and push it down on that hole. This is sort of like those snaps if you were like a sewing, yeah, a mm -hmm. seamstress. All right, and then we're gonna just put, put that on there. All right, now I have this great little <laughs> machine here that's usually on my other table. But this one does it for you, but I'm also gonna show you a manual way because there's lots of different ways that you can that you can put these on there. You don't have to have these fancy machines. I just am blessed and have them. So, well. Like if you were starting out. That's why yeah. she was mentioning uh, last week about the kits. Exactly. Hey, Betsy. Hey, Christy. Right. If y'all have any questions, just throw them out there. I'll read them and we'll try to get them answered. This cap is not wanting to stay on there. If I can get it in there. Okay, live. there we go. Yep. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, it's on there. And then we're going to just pull this down. Oh, <clears throat> another arm exercise. I need to do right. this, y'all. I need arm is. exercises. Now you've got your <laughs> rivet in there. Okay. Neat. Now we're going to move on to the snap. And I'm just going to change these little doodads out real quick. Now, if you didn't have the machine, what would you use? I'm going to show you that okay. in just a second. She's going to show us if we didn't have the fancy machine. <laughs> I just thought it would be because fun. Because, y'all, I want to start trying to do this, and I'm not going to be able to buy all these fancy machines. <laughs> no, they're they're expensive, but once you get going, you're going to realize how much of a time saver it is to actually have these. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our snap on. So, you're going to take your... Yep, this is right. I make sure I was right. Okay, so make sure that when you're putting your snap on there that you have the right side of the snap that's going to close. Because you don't want to put it on there backwards. I have actually done that before too, imagine. All the things that you don't think you ever want to do, I have done. All right, so I want to put both of, oops, both of those pieces on there. It's magnetized, so okay. it keeps wanting to slip. And I'm not used to working at this angle. Let me turn it around here where I can... All right, get off there. Turn around there where I can see it. All right, there we go. Make sure that's straight. And we're going to pull that 
down on there and actually I had it set for a rivet. It'll just take a second. Okay, now I'll pull that down on there. And look how easy that is. That snap Yay. is on there. Okay, I'll set this big heavy thing over here. And now I'm gonna show you how to do it with just a regular tool. Okay, so they make like a snap setter kit. You know, it'll come with several little things and each one would be like the other machine that I used. And then this is for the, um, I call it the bottom side of the snap. It's not the finished side. It's gonna be your underside. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, so this is what we could use if we don't have the fancy machine. Exactly, now. exactly. Okay, so remember, you wanna make sure when you poke this through there that it's, it's on the right side when you actually have your finished product. All right, so I'm gonna lay this flat and I'm gonna put my little thing on there. And I need a mallet. All right, so this thing is kind of rounded. It's got a little dome on it and you're gonna to wanna to put that little section on top of the inside of that snap, and then you're just gonna hammer it away. And you'll see it tighten up. I kind of moved around a little bit to make sure that I got all those little edges. Mm -hmm. And there's your snap. There you go, y'all. Don't need a fancy machine. Nope, definitely <laughs> don't have to have the fancy stuff. All hey, right. Lev is that Levada or right. Levada? And now we have our Look! finished knife sheet. And I love that color. Yeah, it turned out really pretty. Yeah, it really I is. did the lighter lacing on it so it would show up. Yeah, that's pretty. And the edges are all beautiful. So pretty. Now these are great gifts for any um, man or woman that carries a knife, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> that works with a knife or hunts. Oh, because like hunting that. is always a big thing. There's lots of women hunters out oh, there. Oh yeah, I have a daughter-in-law and my daughter likes to hunt, so. Okay. So now we are going to make some earrings. Yay. And I thought it would be really fun to let you make your own pair while we're here. Oh, fun. Yay. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need a uh, just a small piece of leather. And this is probably about a four ounce leather. You don't want to make it super thick or super thin if you're going to be putting stamping on it. So I've taken the, the leather here and I've I just made a little pattern. You can use whatever pattern you want. I've um, got a few here. This is just a like a little long one. If you can see that, so you really could just find some on yeah, the you can internet just, and just print. Yeah, or you can make you can shapes. Just, you could just scrap. You know, just cut your own little shape. However you want to do it. I made my own patterns for these. Here's this one here. I love this color, y'all. It's my favorite yep, color. Yeah, I did that just oh, for you. Oh, turn turned around. around. Okay, there's this my one. My favorite color. And this is kind of what we're going to be doing today. All right. So here is your leather. I've already um, she's already diagrammed it. I've for already me. diagrammed it for. I figured that would save us a step. Sketched it out. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna want to wet our leather. There you go. You're gonna want to wet it just like we did on the other stamping. You're gonna want to make sure that your leather is is good and moist so okay. that it'll adhere the stamps. I'm gonna give you a mallet. There you go. All right. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, with this pattern that we're making, it's kind of like a, a like a flowery kind of pattern. So this is gonna be our center. Okay. Okay. And it is- a, Hey, Deb. It is a craft, hey, Marcy. It's a craft tool and it is, I think it says five, six. I don't have my glasses, I can't help her out. I have mine on, <laughs> they're hard to see. It's a 506. Okay, so we're gonna take it about in the center of your pattern. Put a couple of wax on there. All right, so your this turn. is making the design. Yep, this is making our design. Okay, so the next one we're gonna use is going to be, it is N303, and it, it kinda, yeah, looks great. Next thing, it's gonna be, it's kinda like a little shell, if you can see that. I don't know if you can see it. But anyways, so we're gonna take this one, and we're gonna go, whoops, just kind of a little, um, circle around our circle. And just place it where you want it. Hammer it a couple of times. So it looks sort of like a flower kind of pattern. Yep, and I'll show you this one in just a second. I'll tell you what, you go ahead and do yours and I'll show them this. Okay, so this is where we're at and you can see the um, no, I didn't do that right. design. <laughs> Did I? Oh, I gotta put it this way. Yep, it's okay. <laughs> Y'all have already got mine all messed up. And if you and if you want to keep going with the other way, you can. So, I mean, this is your design. You can make up whatever you want. 
These were just some tools that I had, and I said, oh, that turned out kind of pretty. I think that we'll make those today. So the next one that we are going to be using is going to be a 300. And it looks kind of like a diamond, maybe? Or part of half of a diamond? A triangle? I don't know. So we're, I'm gonna put this one right on top, actually between the two that I've already done. And yeah, this may be different than the one some. I did before. <laughs> Hers looks a lot better. <laughs> it, takes it takes practice. practice. <laughs> it takes practice. Hey, Norma. I want her to teach me how to do a wallet because I love that wallet she's got at the Rusty Chandelier. Um, she has a booth, y'all, a vendor booth at the Rusty Chandelier in Laurel. And so even if you don't live in the area, if you're traveling this way, y'all stop in. Yeah, I'd love to see you. Okay. Oh, wait, I forgot. I didn't watch. Okay, so you're going to go doing... in between. You're going to go here. But which way? This way, just like that, okay. In between those two, so I'm going to show you this while she's working. <laughs> so now it looks like kind of like a star, all right. And then the next tool we're going to use is I had a smaller one and I don't know where it is, so we're just going to pick one out of here. And it is a D435, and it looks kind of like a shell, too, it's just a different size. And we're gonna go in the middle of the ones that we just did on those points. And it's okay if you go off of your pattern because we're gonna be cutting these out. The reason I did not cut them out before we actually did our stamping, if you remember in episode four, um, if you're stamping on leather, and it's tiny, you have to tape the back of it. So this just makes it really easy, yay. <laughs> this just makes it really easy to be able to stamp and not have to tape the back of your leather because remember, it's gonna stretch when you're stamping it. Yeah. So that's our next step. Look how cute. Okay. And then I'm gonna actually take that same tool and kind of go around those. I like this pattern, y'all look. I love that pattern. And these are just ones that I've just kind of made up off the top of my head. I get these stamps and I go, ooh, that look neat. Hey, and I Shelly. Just, it's all just trial and error. So if you're thinking about doing this and you want to get some stamps, just pick some and go with it and have fun with gonna it. I was going to ask you, when you buy your leather, does it come in big rolls or sheets? You can or buy it lots of different ways. Okay. You can buy like... um a quarter panel of a cowhide. You can buy, just go with whatever you want to do. That looks good. <laughs> um, you can buy a quarter panel, you can buy a whole hide. It, it kind of depends on how much money you want to spend. Okay. So um, there's lots of, like I mentioned, handy leather. There's, um, oh gosh, now, see, I always have a brain freeze. Um, Spring, Springfield leather. There, I mean, there's lots of leather companies out there. Um, but uh, so it, it, different things you can get more quantity and yes, and different. lots of different kinds, different uh, styles of leather. Different, you know. I was looking the other night; a, a, a guy was making a wallet, and he just he did a great job for his first try, but he didn't use the right kind of leather, and so his product wasn't what he wanted it to be. So you really just have to keep. It's just trial and error. You kind of have to um, do it one time, and you're going to love your mistakes and you're going to hate your mistakes. But if it's something that 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 you made, you'd be proud of that. Because it is, it's hard, it's very time consuming, and it takes a long, pro it's a process to learn how to do all this. So for newbies, is yes. there a store you can go in and talk to somebody and actually see the leather, or is it um, all online? I, no, I, I would say Tandy Leather or Springfield Leather would probably be my two picks. Now, of course, I'm not, like I said, we don't have one near us, so when I'm on the road, and okay. I want to look at something. That's what I do. I'm like, Where oh, where's one? the nearest Where do you go? Um, there's one in New Orleans. That's okay. closest one to us. We may have some people in New Orleans near that area. And then there's one in Birmingham. I mean, they're all across the country. So your town may have one. And that would be awesome. Hey, because Susan. You can go hey, by. Diane. They have, they have classes there that you can take um, and learn how to do stuff. And it's kind of nice to be able to do that because then all your questions are answered right then. Okay. So, are you doing both of them or just one? I don't know. Oh, okay. You didn't do we'll, this. You didn't do we'll this. We'll just stuff. let you finish up. Okay. Okay. 
So I've we got only about done, 15 minutes. Okay, I've only done one of them and that's fine. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it out. So as you can see, it kind of looks like a hot mess to be really honest. All right, so we're gonna take our scalpel and we are going to just cut on that line. And if it's hard to see, you could always lay your pattern back on there and kind of have a guideline and always make sure that you're using a sharp tool. That is like number Not one. Not dull. <laughs> yeah, number one thing, in my opinion, with leatherworking is you don't want a jagged edge when you get finished. So make sure your tools are sharp, take care of them. And I'm kind of cutting this on an angle and I'll have to go back and kind of straighten up my edges. I didn't cut all the way through, talking about that sharp knife. How do you sharpen them? You just have to get a new well, blade? Yeah, these you would definitely just have to get a new blade. But like on your swivel knives and all that, you just have, you have to sharpen them every time you use them. Okay, so now we have it cut out. Yay! Okay. All right, so to be able to finish this, we would um, dye it, paint it, whatever you want to do. I have That's how she got this color, probably. Right. right? I, I dyed that one first, just like we did on the knife sheath. Same exact process. You're going to dye your leather, and then you're going to paint it whatever color you want. And basically, on this on this one here, whoops, on this one here, I just brushed over with the blue so that you could see the stain through it. Yeah. Okay? So, and there's lots of, I made this little bracelet the other day, and there's lots of different. Oh, I love the bracelet. There's lots of. Now, what's your price point? So there's I lots of, that there's lots of color uh, options out there. They do make a leather paint. Um, you can use acrylic paints, um, but there's lots of, um, and this is just stamps. Like, this is just flower stamps. It's not any heavy tooling or anything like that. Now, this one here, I just did my own pattern, and, and um, that's tooling and um, beveling. So there's lots of different ways. The stamping is probably the most um, the most intermediate, you know, kind of way, beginner kind of way. So remember how we did the knife sheath and we beveled that, that back where we took the edge off of it? We're gonna do the same thing on the earring and that's just gonna give you that nice smooth finish when you're wearing your earring. You don't want it to be like scraping your head or and the nice thing really about leather earrings is they're super light. You know how you can get an earring right. this big and they're like super heavy and they're weighing on your ear? Leather earrings are super lightweight and they will last forever. Forever and ever, forever, ever. Forever, Okay, so once we get this part done, we would dye it, paint it, be creative, do whatever you wanna do to it. And then you're gonna do your same thing with your burnishing your edges. Get those edges pretty. Yep. You want like to make Like we did the, the knife. Which one did we do this one? Yep. And you're going to want to just make those edges nice and smooth. And of course, like I said, I would be um, dy uh, dyeing this first before I did this step. But your color, if you didn't want them to stay natural, right? right Does anybody right. leave them natural like that? Absolutely. And over time, leather's kind of cool. You know how right. um, it'll patina, it'll it'll have its own color. Just the um, the humidity in the air. Um, and maybe oils from your fingers. Oil, yep, oils from your it. skins. There's the skins. Hey, Skin. Mary. <laughs> hey, <laughs> there's, Debbie. There's lots of different reasons that um, it will. But humidity is a big one, and I didn't realize that. So that is that is one thing. So, so for those that are hopping on, I'm Wendy. I'm the owner of Rosebrook Boutique, located near Meridian, and this is my series, Handmade at Heart, with Craft Around the Clock TV. Y'all make sure y'all go and uh, join that uh, page, and we also have a YouTube page, so you can subscribe to that. So make sure y'all are hopping on all the places. All the information's in the description above. Now, Tara's information, because we were running, we I forgot to cross stream and I had to come off and go back on. I didn't put her new information, but that is her, reg, her personal page. And if you go on there and message her, she can get you to the right place. But um, you can tell them what it is. It's 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 Tara's Leatherworks. So she's made her a business page now. Yes. So if you want to find her, just go to Facebook and search Tara's Leatherworks. Yes, and if you have any questions, I would love to be able to help you out and give you guidance. And I may not be your best avenue, but hey, it's a start. 
What so? The next. So now your price point. So how much would this brace something like a bracelet um, be? Depending on the width of it, just because it's a little bit more leather, it may take a little bit more time. It's around six to eight dollars. Okay, and then your earrings usually run Over, around the same. Okay, six fifteen. So Grace kind of depends points. on how much how much detail. Now goes of course into these would be more. Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> this is more details, y'all. Yes, and you have to think about the time that goes into something like right. that. I hope that y'all will appreciate people that do handmade things right. and their time and their energy and their creativity that goes into something because it it is really an art. It right. is, and it and it is time consuming. Not to say that I don't love it. I do. I absolutely love doing this, but I hope that you will all appreciate those people that really take their time and do something. You know, I could go on to Amazon and I could buy an earring like this and it would cost nothing, but it's not handmade. Right. It may say it's handmade and it may be handmade by somebody, but it most likely it's going to be a print, you know, a stamp. And well, and I'm a big supporter of small business owners because I'm one myself and shop local as much as you can. But when you're traveling, check out these uh, handmade shops and vendor places because they, they need your business, y'all. Uh, sometimes Amazon, you know, don't really <laughs> need everybody's business, right? They right. got enough. And like even the crafts, you know, I do crafts and home decor and stuff like that. You know, yeah, you can get it in Hobby Lobby, maybe a little cheaper, but it's mass produced, you know, very... Some of it's cheaply made, too, yeah, yeah. Um, if you get right down to it. But I love Hobby Lobby. Yes, <laughs> I, I do, there. too. I shop I there, too. too. Absolutely. But, you know, every once in a while, it's good to look up a handmade artist, a uh, small business owner, and give them some love, y'all. Hey, Bertha. Okay, so the very last step that we would do, we've, we've made our earring. We've got it designed. We've uh, dyed it. We've painted it. We've burnished all of our edges. So the, the very last step would be to finish this, um, the leather, because when you put uh, paint on something, you want it to be able to stay there. So I use Resoline, which is a pro just a leather protective, and I put this on almost everything that I do, simply because I want it to last you forever. So you'll do that and on so, this too? Yes, that's, okay. got, that's got Resoline on it. The earrings have Resoline on it. So you're just gonna take a paintbrush. Here, we'll do this one real quick. So we'll take a paintbrush. Um, you can use a, um, a dauber, um, a leather dauber, which is basically just a little fuzz ball, a little pom-pom ball on the end of a, a metal stick, just so that you're not getting your fingers in it. But you're basically, yep, you're basically just going to put a thin coat so over the top doing. of it. And now you have a completely finished, whoop, a completely finished product. So you let that dry, and yeah. then you have and to this put dries your hardware really on. fast. Yeah, this dries really fast. And where do you buy your hardware? Stuff? Um, I have actually been looking to try to find some some better hardware. I mean, you can like we were just talking about different different craft stores and things, and mm -hmm. you can buy hardware there. To me, it's not the quality that I'm looking for. Um, in you well, know, well, I don't like them to turn. Yeah, and and that's one thing. Um, and speaking of that, and when, some people have sensitive ears, and they have to have a certain, yes. you know, and you can buy sensitive kind of, ear stuff at different places. Okay, so this is what I've learned. You take your earring back like this. Now it's going to be hanging. The earring is actually going to be hanging. Let me see if I can give you a visual. Okay, so here's our here's our earring. The way this is punched, it's going to hang like this. So see, the earring back mm -hmm. is not correct. So when it's hanging on your head, it's gonna be like this, right. which is not what you want. So you can put your pliers down here at the bottom. I wish, you're right. I was trying to, I know, I was trying to get it to where there was a background that uh, I could see it. Okay. <laughs> Against your shirt. <laughs> yes. Okay, so take that, hold that, then grasp your top piece and very easily turn it. Twist it. Uh-huh. To get it where you want it. Right. So that's kind of what I've been doing, um, but a lot of times the if the if this is a cheap made, it'll break. Um, so you want to make sure that you get you know the highest quality that you can get um, and still be happy with your with your finished product. Hey Ellen, and I don't have my little stamping board here, um, but I, so I'm just gonna lay this on a piece of leather. But just to finish this off, we're gonna put our um, hardware on there. So this is making your hole. Yep, I'm just gonna make a little hole in there. And there's our little hole. And then we're gonna get grab a jump ring. And that's what I call it. I don't know if it's actually called a jump ring or not. And we're gonna separate it. 
My mom used to work. It was called the Golden Chain Gang, y'all. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and it was fun. a little kiosk in the mall. I was, you know, <laughs> in my 20s, y'all, and I'm 53, so that tells you how long ago it was. But the chains came on these big rolls. Oh, yeah. And you had to make, find the hole to put the little uh, uh. clasps on there. And we didn't do that until the customer bought the chain, so we'd know how long oh. they wanted. That's when the gold chains were, you know, popular. And we had all the little tools, but I love doing it, y'all. It's tedious work, but I loved it. And I just kind of overdid that one. But so, yeah, it is tedious work. If you got the little tools, it's pretty It easy. is just basic pliers. I mean, you can use needle nose. You can, you know. Right. Your husband's got them out in the right. garage, I promise. Hey, Margaret. And it's good to keep the little tools or needle nose plies because sometimes your earrings will do that and it'll fall mm -hmm. off and it's like, well, I've just wasted my money on the earrings. No, just close the little thing up and put yep. it back together. <laughs> get your little pliers out and fix them up. Okay. So there is our There it is, y'all. And earrings. I mean, we went pretty fast. Probably she would take a little more time oh, yeah. with it, you know. <laughs> my, um, my shape is not super great on that, but, but I mean, you get the idea. Really, you probably can make a pair of earrings in, what, 30 minutes? Oh, yeah. You can make these pretty quickly. These make great gifts. Um, all your friends, your family members. So that would be the one that looks really, really pretty. And <laughs> the, the one, one that's she's... not so pretty. But hey, you Jessica. get the idea. Hey, you Barbara. Get the idea. So, what, y'all have any questions? I can't believe we, we finished on time. Is there Yay! anything else we need to tell them? Can you think of anything else? I would just say, you know, get started with something that you love. If, if, if it's not leather or... You know, whatever it is, just... Can I go show them out? Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, here, how about this? You just enjoy what you're doing. What were you going to show them? The apron. I love the apron. <laughs> did you do the, the apron? No, my daddy uh, did the apron. Can I show This it? is something... Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. This is something that... Um, I, it's a custom piece that I have been working on. This is just a, a, an example of a journal. I'll kind of put it up there a little bit closer so that you can see the detail work in that. And that does uh, take some time and some energy and some thought. Um, I basically just did this with a pattern, um, stenciled it on there and I did all my that. carving. And, uh, and then the inside, you know, it's just. Uh, and you have some of these, not maybe not like, just like them, but No, this some. is just a custom one, but I do have some of these at the Rusty right. Chandelier. And I, I mean, I could just do a plain cover on it. Of course, that's super easy to do, but all this is hand stitched. Um, I do have a leather sewing machine. Now, if they get it with you personally, how much is that? How much do you sell those if they get with you personally? If, not if they get those? with if they get with me personally, they are around forty to fifty dollars. Um, we can do cowhide. We, I mean, there's lots of different uh, color options, um, but something customized is going to you know cost a little bit more depending on what kind of tooling you want right. on there. If it's something simple, you know, it's not a super huge amount. But if you want something pretty elaborate, it, you know, the price can get up there. It takes a lot right. of time. Hey, Mel. Okay, so I wanted to show y'all this because I love it. And <laughs> all of us crafters need a good apron, don't we? But look how cute. She said her dad did this. But I love it. And you could probably put, like, some details oh, in this. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You know, like we did the details. Or you could put, like, um, the little stampers. What, uh -huh. did, what all you got on these? Okay, so that one is actually um, a stencil that I traced on there and then I would do all my um, my beveling and all my edging and, and stamping. And um, I love all the pockets. Now, did he buy the apron or he made the apron too? He made the, his, actually his wife made the apron, I oh, believe. Oh, I love it. And um, and actually I do a lot of seamstress work too. So well, there we you have can it. make aprons and put leather pockets on them. Whatever y'all want. <laughs> um, whatever y'all want to make. Um, I, I, I always say, uh, give me a picture and I can make it. And that's just kind of my, my motto. Sorry, I left the camera. <laughs> I just had to show that uh, she apron. Loved that I, apron. I saw it last time, but we were already off camera, and I love it. Um, let's see. Hey, Wendy. Got another Wendy on here. Hey, Wendy. Um, so, y'all heard her. She can make aprons, and she can just do it all. I, I love a wallet that she has at the Rusty because it's the turquoise and tan. I mentioned that last time, but... Here, I can even show you a sample of um, that. So, I'm going to probably hit her up to teach me how to make a wallet for myself. <laughs> okay, she said uh, leather or turquoise and tan. Here's the leather that she made. Oh, I love that. Um, 
that I made that out Look, of. Look, y'all, don't y'all love it? Now, did you buy it like that? No, I did not. This is actually I a I thought your daughter said you did it. Okay, yeah, this is a dyeing technique, and it's really fun. It's made with shaving cream. Me. So, well, basically. We'll have to do another video to show that, y'all. Yes. So, basically, where the shaving cream is is where it's white, and where the dye is is the color. Okay. So, it's, it's, a, it's a process, but it, it's a really fun process to do. And um, I was I was kind of proud of this one. I thought, oh, that looks really neat. It looks like marble. Of course, I put the better stuff on the wallet that I made. But um, yeah, a lot of different hey, dyeing Missy. techniques out hey, there. Hey, Mandy. Hey, Debbie. And this is another. Well, y'all, that's a great. I, I want to learn that. Yeah. Do you have to do it outside? No, you can do it outside. Okay. So it's, it's not, not too too messy. No, it's not super super messy. The biggest thing is that you have to have water to rinse it off. Okay. <laughs> and I don't have water in my shop, so. But you mentioned something last week that you deer. were like, "Oh, I mm -hmm. need to get a deer one made for my husband." So I've been Look working there, on the deer one for her to give to oh, her husband. Love it. And now I basically I did this one just with um I just found a pattern of a of a deer and drew it on there and stamped it out and so there it is. He's ready to stitch up hey, for you a gift to give to your husband. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a few more minutes, so if y'all have any questions. I'd like love to hear them. Yeah, she can answer anything y'all have. I'm trying to think if I need to ask you anything else. Are we forgetting anything? We've asked price points. We've told y'all that she has a vendor place at the Rusty Chandelier in Laurel, and then we put her personal page, but you can find her on her business page as well, and that is... Tell them again. Tara's Leatherworks. <laughs> now, is is um, is it all different? Like Leatherworks is works a different word? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's just so three Tara's words. Leatherworks. Yes. Sometimes that matters when you're searching somebody. Yeah. Um, if it's one, if they put them together for separate, and Tara's has a little apostrophe if you're just searching. Debbie, I think I said hey to everybody. Well, thanks everybody for watching. We got one more minute, so I'm gonna say my goodbyes. Thanks to Tara for spending two Fridays with us, y'all. I Yay! appreciate it so much. I've had such a good time, and I hope that I've been informational to somebody out there. She's great. I told her she needs to do this on her own. <laughs> Start teaching uh, more. I, I don't know. I might, I might, you know, go on that adventure. Hey, she does really good, y'all. She just takes the lead, don't she? Um, and next Friday is my sixth episode, and I don't know if we'll continue it after that. We're we're good for six episodes. Um, may take a little break and come back. You never know. So y'all make sure y'all tune in next Friday at 10. We're going to be with Jane Ann and in Ellisville. So not too far from here. And she's going to show us how to restore your furniture okay. back to its original luster. So she does like a technique and it not really painting or anything, but she just restores it back to the original look. And so I'm excited to, for y'all to meet her. So y'all come on back and see us then. And y'all have a great weekend. Bye, Bye. y'all. Thank y'all.